Howdy. All right. Oh. Thanks. All right. So this is a pretty big topic for 10 minutes, but we'll see how much we can cover together. So. Uh, here's, here's what we're going to talk about. I think when, when most people uh, think about WordPress and media, they usually think about the media gallery, which looks something like this. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about what happens before your image ends up there. So when it's kind of you know, spinning like this uh, inside Gutenberg and it's uploading, or you drag it into the media modal. And uh, so we're going to be talking about sort of that process that happens in the middle uh, between there. So after you drag an image, when you're waiting for it, uh, WordPress uses Pluplode uh, to handle that upload. And uh, Pluplode handles all that sort of middleware between, uh, between your browser and the image itself and WordPress. But it doesn't do anything with the image itself. It just serves the full size image directly to WordPress. And then it lands it uh, visually, it lands it in the media gallery that we saw earlier. But what's it doing while it's uploading? The main thing that takes the most time. Um, are sizes. And what I mean by that are different like resizes of the same image. Uh, by default, the ones that are created by WordPress are thumbnail, uh, small, medium, medium, large, uh, large, and full. The full one is just the, the entire image that gets uploaded. And mainly what this means is different sizes in resolution. And uh, so that's mainly for, for both caching, so that WordPress already has a, an image of that size to serve, um, and also so that it can provide uh, your browser with a series of, of sizes uh, for responsive images uh, with source set, so that your browser can pick the image that's most appropriate uh, for the user in that particular instance. Um, other folks also, so plugins and themes, can add additional sizes to the ones that WordPress generates for art direction or for different resolution reasons. So if, they, if you would want uh, an image to, to be both presented in, as like a logo, but also somewhere else in your site, and maybe like an about page, you could use the same initial original image and have it just cropped a little bit differently uh, automatically by WordPress uh, at, at this time. Um, underneath, now this is a super light sort of description of the way that this works, so, so pardon me with that. Um, but there's a function that is called WP Generate Attachment Metadata, and it does a lot of processing of the image, but one of the things that it has is a big long call um, inside it uh, to uh, a, multi a function called multi resize, which takes the image and then does a big set of resizes just in succession, just in order, all of the sizes, all at once. Um, and this is actually an instance of uh, WP Image Editor, if you're interested in a little bit more of the, the details, rather than uh, being a method. Uh, but this is basically how that works. Uh, how it happens, so WP Image Editor, the actual thing, then calls uh, either uh, Imagic or GD uh, by default. And although if you're a developer and you want to provide a different image backend to WordPress to be able to do the sizes a different way, you can totally also do that. So by default, uh, the engine that's used is a magic, uh, which uses uh, image magic, uh, if you do a lot of image manipulation. Um, some folks I get asked pretty frequently why this is sort of used as, as the default in core and why sort of this was chosen. Uh, the main reason is that, especially when it was first uh, added, it's kind of the most universally available solution across different hosts uh, that I know of, even still, uh, to be able to manipulate images and do it with detail. Uh, GDE allows you to do resizes, for instance, but doesn't allow you to go more in depth. So some of the things that we uh, were able to add as, as a community to WordPress by adding by starting to use a magic. So if your host supports a magic, this is a, a good thing to check. You can check it with the, uh, the new site health feature uh, in WordPress. You can go and it'll tell you whether it's supported or not by your host if you want to check later. Uh, is One of them is color profiles. Now I hope this uh, shows up well on the screen. But So if you have a custom profile uh, for an image that isn't just uh, sRGB and you upload it, it might look something like this. I think this one was an Adobe RGB image that I uploaded uh, to GD. Uh, and it, GD isn't able to save color profiles. So your image might, the resizes, the other sizes, might end up looking a little funny. 
Um, however, if you used a magic with this exact same image, you'd end up with some colors that are a little bit more accurate for the original image. Uh, so that's one of the things it can do. Um, we're also able to, in WordPress 4.5, reduce the sizes of image huge, hugely. So the total size of images that your user will download uh, from the sizes that are generated, we're able to go down up to 50%. Because with the magic, we're able to be like, a lot more specific, both on uh, what information stays in the image and also how the compression works. And this, we're able to do this without changing visually the way that it looks to users at all, which is, which is pretty cool. Uh, another thing that it allows you to do, uh, Magic supports a lot more file types. So one of the things that it can do is handle now um, as of WordPress 4.7, so this is still a little bit ago, this is where the PDF thumbnails come from. So only Magic can handle that. Uh, and if you wanted to do other profiles, a lot of servers support a ton of different, f or a different uh, formats, I mean. A lot of servers support many, many different file formats with Imagic and Image Magic, and you can write code that will allow you to parse that. You're not blocked from doing so, uh, from doing operations, basic operations on images for any file type that your system supports. So that's a thing that you can do, uh, absolutely. Imagic is also a bit kinder on resources, which takes us to the next part of the talk, limitations. So. There are some limitations with the way that the system currently works. Um, maybe you've seen this before. I mean, I hope not all the time, but it, it, it's a thing that happens. Um, there's been some work to avoid it. But the biggest problem with the way that images currently get generated is that they are all generated in one HTTP request. And as plugins and themes add more and more sizes, and also as, uh, as images get larger, this is, becomes more and more likely to either time out or for your system to, for the server that it's on to run out of resources. Um, so if it does time out, right now, your original image will end up in your media library, the one that you uploaded, but none of the sizes will show up, and WordPress won't even know they exist. So that's kind of a problem. Um, when we talk about resources, um, what I'm mainly talking about is processor time, which is uh, in, in effect about the amount of time that you're just waiting to, if you want to think about it that way. And memory, um, one of the things that's a little bit more difficult with GD when it's resizing images, as far as resources go, is that it requires that the entire image be uncompressed in memory while it's doing all of its operations. And Magic does not. So if your host, especially if it's a shared host, supports a Magic, then you're a lot more likely to have your, the request completed if you're using a Magic. So that's another cool thing. Um, and of course, as images get larger and larger, now we're seeing you know, phone images be the size of what used to just be professional, uh, professional camera sort of sizes and resolutions. It becomes more and more likely that that might that you might run out of resources. Um, so that's that's one issue. Another one is that it's not dynamic. So the reason that it's done the way that it is right now is because doing it in a dynamic fashion might take too much time to generate those images for all the users. And so, especially with shared hosting, um, it's, it's, you're less likely to be able to have those sizes uh, delivered on time and quickly to, to users. But it also makes it harder. So if you have uh, one, just one page that needs a different size, for instance, you don't want to have to generate all those sizes for every single image that you upload. And so it's a little bit harder to, to get exactly what you want uh, or just an image um, on demand. So the current state is not really the best state. All of this won't be fixed in WordPress 5.3, but let's talk about a few things that are on the roadmap. So the very first thing, and this is kind of the one I'm most excited about, is save state. So now as the uh, different sizes get generated, so right now we're ready in course, so assuming we don't end up the general disclaimer these are things that I hope will be finished, but you never really know what bugs are going to come up during, during alpha, beta, and RC, so we'll see. But these are some things I really hope will end up in, in WordPress. This is one that has already landed in, in Trunk, so it's kind of the most likely. Uh, so right now, in Trunk already, WordPress is able to save as it generates images um, into meta each of those images. 
Um, and what that means basically is that each as WordPress is making those sizes, it remembers that it's already done it because previously it did not. So it's able to add it. We're now able to add a feature to resume or detect that it has failed and then retry and not start from the beginning. Previously, the only way to, for a user to really recover would be just to kind of keep uploading and kind of hoping it's going to work that time, which is really, really, really bad user experience. So I'm excited about this one. Um, the next one is the idea of having sort of a gold master in and full changing what it means. So at the moment, you do basically have a gold master in that you're and what I mean by gold master is a, a file that is exactly the same as the original image that you uploaded. Uh, I think it's important to always have that uploaded on your site so that if in the future you need additional sizes or you're going to do something different with your site, you can, uh, WordPress can get those, can get, create those images from the original source. So a really one example of that is when you're switching themes, it might, the new theme might require different sizes than the original one. So it's really good to have that to have that source uh, that's there. But at the moment, the way that it works, you might have the source image served as, as just an image on the site if, you're, if a device is requesting a resolution that is uh, higher than the sizes that WordPress generates. And that's not ideal, because your original image probably has some things inside it, like thumbnails and data, that makes the image large enough that you don't really want that to be served. So the idea is to change that. Uh, the next one is to add back. So many years ago, there were details on what HTTP error meant. Now you get no information. The idea is to add that back. There's a really there's a cool patch uh, from that uh, of, of that fixes this from uh, Ramon uh, Finken, and I'm pretty excited about that. I'm hoping that can make it in. Another thing that's being discussed is to maybe add some more sizes. The large that is currently that is currently there isn't that large, the default WordPress size, and so uh, often that also results in the full makes it more likely that the full size is going to be served. So because we want to always serve the smallest image possible to users, this is something that is possible be, that we couldn't do before because we were worried about adding more sizes and making it more likely to fail for users, but is now possible because WordPress can remember what it's done essentially. If you want to see more details or are interested in helping out, uh, which would be super great, uh, you can check out this post from Andrew Oz about some important image uh, tickets on make.wordpress.org slash core. Um, or also, there's a contributor day tomorrow. Uh, feel free to come chat with me. I would love to help you get connected. And that is it. Does anyone have any questions? It doesn't just have to be about images, too, yeah. <laughs> you can ask him about coffee. You can ask him about coffee. That's also true. You can ask me about coffee. Happy to chat about coffee. <laughs> Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, I may have three questions. Uh, the first one. Yes. Uh, so by default, WordPress uploads uh, images in, in multiple formats. Right? You, you upload a single image, then WordPress creates, uh, say, Three or four different sizes, right? Correct. Before. Yeah. So how do you stop that from happening? That's the first question. Because it's fancy, you know? You just want a single size and WordPress does multiple size. Because you talk about uh, resizing all that, sometimes your team could do that, you know, your your team could, could resize, I mean uh, I mean do it on track for you. I I don't know. So second question is that uh, well can can I answer the first one first? Okay, sure. Um so the so yes, you can change it. I don't remember the filter name off the top of my head, um, but there is a there's a filter that you can use in WordPress, and you can change what those sizes are. So absolutely, if if what's best for your site is not that, then that's cool. I generally don't recommend that folks that don't have a team uh, working on it do that because then that disables the if you're not using either the sizes from your theme being generated or the default image sizes, then WordPress doesn't have anything to serve except for the original for responsive images. And so you lose all of that bandwidth savings uh, that you would end up with if you, if you disable it entirely and aren't like, using another method to have your, your responsive images needs sort of taken care of. 
But yes, absolutely, there's a filter and you can, um, you can disable it or add sizes or whatever you would like, for sure. So that comes to my second question. So WordPress, I, in my opinion, they handle images pretty poorly. You know? So if, if, especially when it comes to loading big images and all that. So my question is that, uh, what is your recommended, like, like Google, Google is using WebP formats and all that, right? For, for speed, speedy loading and all that. So what's your recommended? I mean, if just a site is hosting multiple images and all that, you know, what is your recommended way of, I mean, what, what's the, what do you recommend? To, to, for, for speedy loading images of WordPress? I'm, I'm not sure I 100% understand uh, the question. Uh, WordPress doesn't use WebP because it's not supported uh, very widely across browsers. Um, there has been talk about supporting it in the future, and there's a patch that you can look at if you want to try and um, use that on your site. Um, right now, I mean, most of my recommendations for sort of uh, the general user would be a lot of them are reflected in the way that, that WordPress handles images, but I'm not, so I'm not sure. No, what, what's the best way for, for uh, what's the best way to optimize <coughs> images in WordPress? I mean, any recommendation for, for speed, for, you know, for the, for the speed in loading those images, I mean, what do you recommend? Um, I guess, so there are various tools that you can use to sort of minify or, or uh, images more. In the general case, I have a hard time recommending any particular thing because I think everyone's site works a little bit differently. Um, WordPress does its best to, to sort of uh, make those images as small as it can right now. And I think as, as far as sort of general users go, I would recommend using WordPress the way that it's, the way that it's set up. Um, but if you want to go further and, and do more you know, manual optimization of, of images, then I think whatever is best for your site is, is what I would recommend. Um, I, don't, I don't have any specific like, services. I don't have any specific services that I would recommend. Uh, how about CEO for images? I mean, do you recommend anything for CEO for images? For, for what, I'm sorry? SEO. For, oh, um, I am not an SEO expert, so I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think, I, I don't think I'm qualified to answer that question well, I'm sorry. Ask Ivan. Mm. Okay, so later, this for Ivan, okay? <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Thanks, Mike. Um, because of more questions? Just one more. Just one more. Okay, last one. Okay, last one, last one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm the new last one. Hi, Mike. Uh, Howdy. So, so supporting uh, WordPress, one, one of the challenges that I've always had is identifying unattached images. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to the error that you were talking about at the very beginning when you upload and you get that timeout. So what's the best way to identify what those unattached images are? Because I've always found the media library column to be unreliable. Um, so how, how would you uh, suggest trying to finding uh, unattached images the right way when you're supporting users? Just because I've always mm. found it to be very, very dodgy. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's a, I'm, I'm trying to remember if there's a good user interface option for that. I don't think I don't think there is a really good user interface option. Um, I think you could probably do, if I were supporting a user and needed to sort of mass fix a problem like that, I might look into making a WPCLI script or just running WPCLI and checking the meta on the images to see what, to see what they're attached to, maybe. Um, but yeah, I don't think that there's a good sort of in use, as far as I, if I'm remembering correctly, I don't think that there's a good vis like way to do it visually for users right now. Um, yeah, I would love to chat with you more about that specifically because there's a lot of conversation around how attachment should work in, in images and how they should be connected or not connected to posts in the future. So I would love to chat with you more about it. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you, thanks so much.